Okay, so this is going to be a really simple video on kind of, you know, basic improvisation exercises you, you can start working on. Um, at some point, I kind of want to do a, a well-organized series of, of videos, but, you know, time constraints. <laughs> so let's start with this one. I mean, it's going to be kind of a collection of tips, but tips I think are really basic and, you know, are important to work kind of always on because it's really important stuff. So. Um, yeah, the main theory that I want to kind of, the th kind of the thesis is that, you know, what is Baroque music? It's defining characteristic is that you hear multiple voices. Well, that's the, that's the theory, right? You're supposed to hear something here and something here. So... <laughs> to hear ta -da -da, and then the answer and this is kind of not so easy to do actually and sometimes even composers there's a fugue by Chopin and it's kind of a bad fugue right <laughs> Chopin is a fantastic composer but the fugue is not super recognizable because you don't hear the right you know the first voice and then you don't hear the second voice and the, the answer is kind of it's it's not so easy to switch from a more harmonic framework, which is the one in which, uh, you know, uh, most of uh, our music nowadays is constructed, to a more polyphonic uh, framework, which is, which is instead of looking at music vertically, vertically like chords, you look at it horizontally like voices. And so the main difference, if you want to make your voices heard, you have to make sure that you help people who are listening to you. And how do you help them? Well, think about it, it this way. Like if you have chords, which are really, really similar, like if you have people are not going to be able to differentiate them. This is in harmony. Now in, in polyphony, it's the same thing. If you have voices, which are really similar, people are not going to be able to really differentiate them. And we want them to differentiate them because we want them to be able to hear, ah, this was one voice, this was one second voice, you know? And so how do you help them? And this is kind of the point I want to make. There is the whole melody that, you know, you can work with. What are the chords which go well together and, you know, how to make things which go well together. But I think there's something much more important than this. So today we're not going to talk really at all about melody. So throw the melody away. I think much more important in Baroque music in general is rhythm. Because rhythm um, allows you to differentiate things. Um, there, there are polyrhythms, like, you know, there are concerts where people have drums and they can make beautiful music just with drums because they are masters of their rhythms. Um, so sorry, we'll, we'll get to the exercises, don't worry. But, um, and so kind of the thing I want to center these exercises around are how to develop different rhythms in both melodies. So in, we're going to start with a melody in the left and a melody on the right. And this touches one fundamental difficulty that we all have. It's the independence of the hands. You know, it's difficult to play something different in the left hand and in the right. So there are a few exercises. The first one is that if you'll notice, you know, even in... I mean, you play, can, it's easy with the right hand and then with the left hand is, oh my God, what is this difficult, right? Because the left hand is much weaker. It's used to doing stupid <laughs> stupid things um, so it needs kind of you know training to be able to play kind of interesting and, and, and especially interesting rhythms so there are a few exercises here it's just about strengthening your your left hand so I would begin with trying something as simple as strengthening your left hands through you know, scales like this of course you can go to more complex arpeggio stuff if you like these but one exercise which is kind of tough but it's it's efficient is is the is the um, third so you It 
does get the blood pumping. So I mean, kind of regularly practice these in your um, in your in your practice just to you know kind of strengthen the left hand a little bit. But this is not that interesting as you know <laughs> pure practice. So something more interesting that allows you to both improvise and work on the strength of your left hand, also on melody, but you know let's not focus so much on melody, is simply improvising with your left hand only and. I mean, I know this looks, ah, oh, come on, left hand only, boring, but it's very difficult. And you can make beautiful pieces which just have the left hand. Uh, it's really not easy. I would start with something rhythmically and melodically simple, just maybe, you know, simple notes, and try to focus on making it interesting. Right? And maybe. Try to make it sound a bit like a, a bit like um, you know uh, cello sonata. Uh. just with your left hand. So this is a really potent exercise. Uh, here we use it kind of to, to get the left hand actually used to playing melodies, but this is, uh, this is really important. So this is kind of the, the, you know, strengthening the left hand, just physical exercises, whatever you like, and left hand only playing. So, you know, this gets the blood pumping in the, in the left hand. Now, we didn't talk yet about rhythms, so let's do it now. This is the developing hand independence uh, kind of part and here as i said it's really important to focus on the rhythm because when we improvise we tend to focus on you know uh, uh, no this uh, sounded wrong um, uh, okay let's isolate what we need to work on here we're working on independence and on, on rhythm so you don't care about the melody you can play uh, you, know, you can play random notes this is totally fine um, just focus on making precise, conscious rhythms. So, how do you begin? Well, here we'll begin with, um, you know, just playing one simple rhythm. Okay? It seems, it seems easy, but you'll see that if you try to play with the right hand, any rhythm, like, let's say, you know, just constant notes. And you do it with the left hand. takes more focus to do the rhythm on the left hand than on the right. And so you'll notice that your melody on the left is worse than on your right usually because you don't have as much brain power to think about it because you're focusing, focusing on the rhythm. Uh, here with you know constant notes it was not that difficult but if you take something more complicated like Before we were really improvising with the left hand. So the difference in this exercise is that you're going to play with the left, with the right, but you just focus on one rhythm. So maybe, uh, I don't know, like whatever you like. Bum, 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 bum. Just, you know, double notes like. And you'll 
see it's much easier on the on the right than on the head on, on the left so uh you know but this is still i mean oh, that's kind of boring i'm just going to play rhythms blah, blah, blah. boring so now let's really work on independence and here you need to begin simple imagine that you have drums imagine that you have you know two big drums and you're playing them with these so let's start with simply playing the same So let's begin with the same thing. One melody. I don't care about the notes. Here I try to play some melody. You can try to. But if you have to play like you know, random things, it's fine. rhythm so tam, pam, pam, regular notes and multiple of this rhythm so you know, twice as fast four times as fast uh, you can also of course do it in, in ternary like right. um, but this is still simple because you know it's it's rather uh, straightforward rhythms but you'll see that as you try to complexify these rhythms, uh, rhythms it's, it's becoming more and more difficult. And this is, if you feel something where really it's confusing for the brain, this is where you can really practice on it and try to break it. So, you know, maybe a rhythm such as, you know, doing, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the names of the notes in English, but you know, it's like one black note and two uh, black notes with a, <laughs> with a tail. So, so it's like, it's one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. difficult because it's you know polyrhythmic so you have becomes difficult. And if you feel something difficult, don't feel frustrated by, oh my god, this is, this is hard, I can't do it. Feel happy, yes, I found something to work on, right? This is great. Um, so this is important, so the, the, the kind of, you know, simple black notes and this stuff. 
is a very common thing. You'll see th this rhythm. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three. you see this all the time in Baroque music. Um, essentially, in Baroque music, you can, you can imagine four. You know, if you have a four-four kind of uh, beat, you, you can imagine like four double notes. Uh, so this is three, but. Imagine just removing one um, anywhere, and this gives you essentially all possible rhythms. So if you remove none, this gives you four notes. If you remove one, it can give you right. Um, so there are many rhythms like this. But uh, another one is the same one as one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. But you, you of course put the long note at the end. So it's. So this is, you know, this one, two, three, one, and the, the, the symmetric one, and of course another very common one, maybe the, the last uh, very important one is, it has a name, but I don't know it in English, <laughs> it's this, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, one, so the, the first note, the long one, lasts three, uh, uh, you know, double, double notes, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, this is actually Brahms, you know. <laughs> Is, is, is creeping up on our Baroque music, but um, so this is a, an extremely common rhythm. You know it; it's it's all all the time is there. But it's very useful to combine it with the previous one. So of course, as as usual, just combine it with you know regular notes. Up. difficult to do this. Um, something also difficult is, you know, it's like uh, it's to combine uh, one, two, three, four, one, you know, with uh, so let's see, how does this work? One repetition. You can you can re replicate it, so it's good. At first, it's confusing, and then you can do it for many 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 repetitions. It can be hard to find a melody to play with, always keeping the rhythm constant. But as, as I said, don't care about the melody. You can even do it like this. But honestly, just being aware that rhythm is the single most important thing in Baroque music is really super important. Um, so why? Why is it so important? Why is the rhythm so important? And this will lead me to the last uh, kind of thing I want to mention for today is, you know, you know, why is, is having rhythm really important? For two reasons. First, obviously, if you have melodies that have the same rhythm, so if you have You 
you try to do this melody again, so maybe this was a bad example, but if I do, um, I don't know, first this is a bad melody because it's always the same, right? But this is okay. Let's let's say we have chosen something like this, so you you your fugue or anything, and then your left hand plays this. This is fine. But if you start playing, you know, a uh, contrapuntus, which has the same shape as this rhythm, so maybe, let's say... I mean, then it was good. You see, here it was good because I changed the rhythms, but when, when we do... sound good but it, it didn't feel like two different voices because they had the same rhythm and if you think about it it's much more difficult for our heads to find aha this was exactly the same notes because notes are complicated it's like you know temporal you know difference of frequencies it's quite difficult but a rhythm we can really feel a rhythm say pam 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 you know you can you can really feel the rhythms on a more basic level so it's much easier to identify the melodies if you can recognize the rhythm and this actually gives you a powerful trick which is that very often i improvise and i get i i, I forget what the melody was <laughs> because i'm bad with melodies um but if you replicate the rhythm people will actually kind of notice that it's the same idea and this is very strong uh, i don't know if you um, if you do, let's say... copyright strike no <laughs> but um, so this is really an important trick and the second reason is actually um, a very interesting reason uh, very often you, you'll notice that you if you have a, a fugue the um, the themes um, rhythm is complicated and interesting but it's interesting in the way that it has holes and why does it have holes? Well, because then it will be overlaid with other melodies, the, the contrapuntus, which also has holes. Sometimes, sometimes it's regular notes to be simple. Um, but um, this is interesting because it, it, it's logical. You have to have a melody which has holes because then you have to overlay it with other melodies. And so it has to shine through. And this is very, very apparent. I mean, if you take, if you take, let's take good reference. I mean, let's take Bach. You know, you look at a simple fugue. You know, this way. Um, no, it's it's not this. It's not. It's. And you see all these. So first, there is a black. Yum. very important uh, because it actually is a hole that will then, when it's reintroduced later, allow you to let uh, your, your present contrapuntus breathe into your, your new uh, opening. So this is very nice, but also all these uh, notes which are held, so So this, you see this is an interesting rhythm. You can also practice can practice with this, the, the previous exercises, um, you know, this lets what's, what will be underneath or over breathe, and this is very important. This is why we really want to develop rhythms. And if you think about what becomes then the, the, the other rhythm, the, the, you know, the contrapuntus, it's yam rhythm 
happens in the whole of the right hand. Oh, sorry, yes. Here only the, the left blends. And then when the right plays, the, the left has a simple rhythm. And this is actually what we practiced earlier. get good rhythm, actually the melody does not matter. The notes don't really matter. No, it's not true, of course, but really focus on the rhythm. So that's my message. So uh, the thing I wanted to mention with this is that it's actually good, once you've seen that rhythms were really important, to actually look at Baroque music, anything you like. It can be Baroque music, it can be modern polyphonic music, it doesn't have to be Baroque, right? If it's polyphonic, it will work normally. Um, and you'll really notice that um, that rhythm is really something important. Um, yeah, let's take maybe an example which is not really Baroque. Uh, there is this beautiful fugue, uh, which is two pianos, I think, by, by Mozart. It's... Something like this. And you see... It's really complicated rhythm. It's really not something like... Um, if you think about uh, Chopin, for instance, I, I really like Chopin, but uh, Waltz has relatively simple rhythm. It's always the same. this but this is not really a rhythm where this is really really strong um, so you know motto work on the rhythm with these exercises so strengthen the left hand because usually is the weaker uh, the weaker hand so physical exercises you know, thirds um, play with the left hand only this actually is a Global exercises works for everything. Like this is very good. Then you can even the polyrhythms this is really really important so you know taking a rhythm on the left taking a rhythm on the right and and really focusing on just the rhythm the melody doesn't matter and the last thing of course is trying to take open any piece you like and try to steal um, sorry get inspired by the rhythms um, and this can be really really a very profitable thing um, so I'm trying to think of good examples but of course you know you take any 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 Bach uh, <laughs> it's a very very safe choice but there are other things which are also very interesting uh, so I really uh, French French Baroque music is actually a good example for rhythms because you know there's kind of this meme that French Baroque music has <laughs> But it has these these um, dotted notes everywhere, and these dotted notes are not just a, you know a kind of uh, a style, but they are also to make the rhythm more more jumpy. And if you if you if you hear Bach, uh, you know it has fantastic jazz uh, interpretations or conversions, and it's much more difficult to do this with Beethoven or Chopin or things like this, because I think. Bach is much better in terms of rhythms uh, than, than these more modern pieces. So really, that's that's kind of all for today. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I, I don't guarantee that I'll answer them in a timely fashion because 
I'm kind of uh, short on time, but I will be very happy to answer them if I have the time. So I hope this was, uh, this was um, interesting and, uh, you know, keep improvising, guys. <laughs> See you.